Welcome my friends, this over here is Ryzen 5 7600X and it's in that test bench over there. In this video we're going to be checking out how good is it in Premiere Pro in Timeline Playback because the new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs actually have an iGPU inside so let's see if that makes a difference. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and your all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So interestingly, uh, I did get the iGPU working now. You just have to install the drivers from the actual motherboard website as well. And then, well, or AMD website. You install the drivers, boom, you've got both of them working. As you can see, I've got the RTX 3019 there and then the Radeon TM graphics, which is the iGPU for that in there. I have no idea what to expect. So let's see what's gonna happen, okay? Let's talk about our test bench. For motherboard, we're using the ASUS ProArt X670E Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. For RAM, we're using Kingston Fury Beast RGB 64 gigabytes at 5200 mega transfers. For cooler, we're using ROG Strix LC2 360 millimeter AIO, which is actually the same Acer deck cooler that I have on the other Intel test bench, Fantex Glacier 1, that's also exactly the same kind of cooler pump just they look different but the pump inside the cool plate and the radiator they're exactly the same but i am using three fantex t30 fans on here just to match my previous test bench setup for gpu we're using asus tuf rtx 1319 we're using two ssds for os we're using the team group cardia c440 and for the actual media and project drive we're using msi spatium m480 drive. It's all powered by the Corsair HX1000 power supply and that's about it. The CPU is a six core CPU. You're going to see the boost clocks are going to be very nice and high. Okay, memory 64 gigabytes here, do a channel. In the end of the video, we're also going to be checking out the hardware. How did the hardware react to all of this? And you know, what are some of the clock speeds? What are some of the temperatures and boosting? How much did we pull out of the actual socket? Okay, let's go. So this is 8 bit 420 60 frames per second. We're playing this back full speed. I'm gonna go show drop frame indicator as well. We're playing this back. No problem. Let's see what is decoding this footage right now. It is the NVIDIA GPU. I'm gonna leave this on Radeon so we can see if AMD is doing anything as well. But it's pretty, pretty simple. I mean, very, very good. 4 to 0, 8 bit, 60 frames per second, no problem. Bear in mind, all the footage is actually color graded as well. There's a color grade on top just to kind of um, replicate some of the normal everyday work type of scenarios that you might have. Timeline is very smooth on a 10 bit, 4 to 0, 24 frames per second, pressing play and we're playing it back, no problem. Don't see any issues, still gets played back on the NVIDIA card. Let's move on to 10 bit 422, 30 frames per second. So now that's CPU bound. Moving around on the timeline, you can hear the CPU is kicking up, the fans are kicking up. Okay, but pressing play, timeline's very smooth as well. As you can see, it is played back on the CPU and a little bit on the NVIDIA GPU. That's the color grade but no problem. Let's move on to 10 bit 422. So this is 24 frames per second. This is like what I'm recording there at the moment. The fans are kicking in because this is all a CPU or like software accelerated codec. Can't have hardware, but it's playing it back. No problem. Zero frames dropped. And then this on this side is still 25 frames per second, but SI, which means it's just basically less compressed, a little bit easier to play back. Don't have to uncompress the footage as much. Look, completely fine. Now this is 422 10-bit 60 frames per second, H.264. So let's press play. Still doing it. Completely fine. Timeline is very okay as well. 
See, it says two frames drop, but actually it's completely all right. Moving on to a H.265, 10-bit, 420, 4K. Everything is 4K. We're going to press play. Let's see. There should be... Yep. NVIDIA card can decode this footage. And timeline is extremely smooth as well, just because it can be accelerated on the NVENC decoders. Now this is H.265, 10-bit, 422, 60 frames per second from Canon R5. I'm just going to press play and this should be absolutely horrendous coder to play back. As you can see, it just can't do that. It's completely CPU bottlenecked. CPU is 100% running at 5.2 gigahertz. Can't do it. That's why hardware acceleration on Intel iGPUs is so good. So if you're doing uh, any of H.265 422 footage, playback is not really going to work. You're going to drop a lot of flame frames and flames from the CPU because it can't play this back. So this is Canon C200 4K, DCI 4K, 60 frames per second Canon RAW. Full resolution. It's struggling a bit. As you can see, it constantly keeps dropping frames and it's not playing it back real time. It's CPU bottlenecked, uh, some red arrows. Never mind two of these. Okay, I guess Canon C200, uh, no go. So this is red 4K. Oh, look at that, how buttery smooth this is. Usually all the AMD processors are usually quite nicely um, working on red. So when I'm pressing play, no problem. Plays back very, very smoothly and timeline is extremely smooth. Now this is 120 frames per second. This is 4 to 0, 8 bit. Mm, look at that. Decode. Look at that. It's actually playing this back, no problem. Because it's accelerated on the NVIDIA GPU. Timeline is not bad either. This is 10 bit, 4 to 2, 120 frames per second, H.264 still. Okay, which gets played back here? Who's playing this back? CPO. And look at that. We're not dropping any frames. This is H.265, 10-bit 420, 125 frames per second. We've dropped 20 frames, so we should be able to play back. Look at that. NVIDIA decoder is playing this back. Timeline's quite all right as well. I'm actually surprised because some of the Intel processors that have iGPU, they couldn't hack this 120 frames per second. Maybe it's because the hybrid ar architecture of the CPU cores uh, just can't figure out what to do with 120 frames per second. But here, this is completely fine. Pressing play, we do drop a little bit. Okay, sometimes we drop in loads. Let's see. There we go. Sometimes we can't quite keep up, but sometimes we can. This is 4 to 2, 10 bit, 120 frames per second. This is going to be CPU bottleneck, isn't it? Yep. Can't play this back. Look at that. Yikes. Now, this is 5K red raw. Scrolling around the timeline. It's quite all right. If I'm pressing play here. what look at that it dropped a few frames in the middle and then now second clip it can't quite keep up once it's dropped it but it's pretty good to be honest for 5k red raw for only six cores that's ridiculous let's try 6k red raw Nope, that's not real time at all. This is not going to work. Timeline is okay, but when you press play, it's a big slideshow. Let's try Black Magic Raw 6K. Okay, there's some kind of weird artifact on the screen. Whenever I press play, it's going to do that. So that's interesting.
But look at that, B raw. I'm not. I don't even have the color grade on, but it just can't hack the B raw. Full resolution B raw. Can't get to it. Which is weird to me. Why can't it do it? It should it. Then this is two B rolls on top of each other. Let's put color grading on as well. Nope. Absolutely nothing. Just can't do it for some reason. That's fascinating. Because I have actually played this footage back with much um, lesser or less powerful CPUs. Let's try red 8K raw. Timeline, quite all right. When we press play. Oh, got excited there for a second. It's a little bit chippy choppy, but all right. I wouldn't edit 8K with this processor. Come on, for laugh, let's try 12K as well. Okay, this is quarter of the resolution. And red was half the resolution. Let's put the red at full resolution. Let's see what happens now. What? Ah. It does play back a little bit at first, but then can't do it. Could it play back half the resolution of 12B? Nah. Proper slidey, slidey, slidey show can't quite do it. So then, let's have a look at the uh, temperatures. Our CPU max temp we hit was 89C, and our CPU package drawer was 117 watts 0.7. Now, that's not as hot as some of the other CPUs go, and if you do want to see them perform exactly the same, hit that subscribe button videos coming out very soon but it's it's all right i haven't tuned the fans really i've just put the normal or like just the standard curve on let's have a look at the clock speeds all cpus hit the maximum of 5.4 gigahertz which is pretty good i mean it's ridiculously good it's almost 5.5 gigahertz on a six core like lowest than ryzen 5. in conclusion is it worth for video editing or what type of video editing can you do with this ryzen 5. I'd say if you stick with 4K and the not H.265 and 10-bit 422, then you're going to be fine with this one. It can handle any, any 4K editing, so if maybe you're doing something else or you want a little bit of a cheaper a kind of processor for your gaming creators tasks or work or something else, then you can actually do video editing with this as well up to 4k i'd say if you go 60 frames per second it's all right if you don't go 10 bit 422 and the same with h265 if you go h265 and 10 bit 422 you're gonna have a crazy crazy time trying to edit it and you'd probably need proxies for that but if you want to build yourself a best bang for buck creator pc then check out the links in the description below i've got a four part guide there where you can figure the budget to fit your needs whichever creator you are from seven 750 all the way to four five thousand pounds dollars whatever go check them out in the description below if you're a videographer and you've got any other footage that i don't have or i couldn't test here then i'd love to use some of your test footage from any of the cameras if, if you have it so please drop me a message or get in contact if you want some of your footage being uh, tested or shown in here also if you've got titles templates or something else then let me know so we can test it out someone sent me these but for some reason i can't find them anymore so sorry whoever sent me these i'd love to test it again i'll speak to you soon thanks guys for watching bye bye